um, and that was all going great. And then in the second year of university, I actually lost my dad uh, very suddenly. And that kind of made me realize what life was worth. And I didn't want to just fall into a, a, a normal job, let's say, with helping grow somebody else's organization. I really wanted to do something purposeful for the world. And so for my dissertation in year three, I decided to write about employee engagement for millennials. And I soon discovered that millennials were not the fresh meat of the workforce anymore. And in fact, that's Generation Z and that's our generation born 1995 to 2010. And we've been shaped completely differently to other generations. And we have so much to bring to the workforce that I realized it's so important that the old generations and the current leaders in the workforce right now need to understand what we're made of so that they can we can mentor our own strengths and bring what we're made of to the workforce. So Today, we're going to look at how to identify our own strengths and weaknesses and opportunities. I think this is um, really important at our age to start understanding what we're made of and what the most important aspect of a job to us is. And then we're going to look at the five different generations in the workforce and understand the differences between us and what we value from the workforce. And then we're going to look at the six key events that have shaped Generation Z. And then if we've got time, which I hope we do, we're going to look at how these events have shaped our expectations of the workforce so we can understand ourselves um, a little bit more as we go into the world of work. So finding your strengths, you know, it's we, we sit down and we start to write, write a CV and we think, who who am I? Who what, what do I enjoy? What, what are my skills? What are my strengths? And believe it or not, you will have a story um, that has shaped you and you have so many strengths that you might not necessarily know you have. So you have to ask yourself questions and I'll send this presentation out. So when you're ready to look for a job, you can start looking through these questions and really identifying what events have already shaped you? What what do you enjoy doing? What interests and inspires you? What what do you do differently? So I realized that I was quite an outgoing person. I, I loved working with people. I loved organizing events. And that's why I decided to do um, a degree in events and hospitality management. Um, you can ask your friends and family how they would describe you, what you what they think you're good at. Um, and a few life hacks here, write down words to describe yourself and to remind yourself who you are. What activities do you enjoy doing? Um, and, you know, be honest with yourself. We don't all have uh, the same strengths and the same weaknesses. Um, so we can work to our strengths, really mentor our strengths, figure out what we're good at, what makes us stand out from the crowd. Then we've got to identify our weaknesses. What do we not enjoy doing? You know, we don't always know what we want to do, but we certainly know what we don't want to do. What do you not enjoy doing? What are you not so good at? Have you got any negative perceptions of yourself that, that you can change? And how might your life be different if you improved a particular weakness or, or area of your life? And we can also do the same thing, write down areas of all our life we're not happy with, things we want to fix, things that we might want to turn into strengths. Um, if we've got a, a certain career that we are trying to aim for, what skills do we need um, to be able to, to achieve that? And then we need to identify our opportunities. What do we want to do with our career? What do we want to do in life? You know, we're going to be working a, a huge chunk. You're going to be putting a lot of hours in and, you know, work life expectancy is increasing and we're going to be working a large chunk of our life. So I think it's so important that we find something that, that we love and we educate ourselves in that. So, in university, when I found Generation Z, I became so passionate about it. And I thought, how can I turn this into a career? And I found the people through social media, particularly LinkedIn, and identified careers in consulting and um, going into organizations and helping businesses understand the next generation that inspired me so that I can go out and, and inspire the leaders to understand Generation Z um, and really embrace Generation Z because we have 
a lot of leaders have a lot of poor perceptions of young generations. You know, you might have heard the phrase was self-entitled snowflakes. And that's not always the case. You know, we are just shaped differently. We have very different mindsets. So we need to understand what, what skills that we can offer to employers, um, such as our technological understanding, um, such as our understanding of social media, um, and identify those that skills and knowledge and where we're best placed within an organization or industry. How do, we, how do we serve our audience in a way that fulfills them? And that's really about finding, identifying a purpose that you resonate with. Um, and I'll go more, more, into that, more into that later. It's so important that we, we have a purpose in a job. Um, as Generation Z, we want to feel connected to a purpose. We want to work as a unit and grow together and achieve more than just going to work nine till five. We want to, we want to connect to a purpose in a job. You can share your interests, knowledge and skills with your network and team and know yourself. You know, you know when you're in the right place, when you feel good about yourself. And that's about identifying your opportunity. Do I feel good about this? I was in my degree doing events and hospitality management um, in work roles, in events and hospitality management and employee engagement. And I felt so good about myself and I knew that that was the right opportunity for me um, to embrace. So a quick task for you guys, what I want you to do is write down five events that have shaped you as a person. And then I want you to think about what is the most important aspect of a job to you. So there are actually six key events that have shaped Generation Z, which we're going to go into. And you might be able to figure some of those out in this task. But I want you to write down five events or five things that have shaped you as a person. I'll give you a couple of minutes. It might be your parents, it might be technology, it might be social media, it might be the fact that you've been through a huge life event that shaped you. For example, I lost my dad and that made me realize what my life was worth and that, that event shaped me massively as a person. It might be that you watched your parents struggle with money and it's it's pay and salary that's important to you in, in a job role. And that shaped you as a person because you understand how important it is to essentially survive. <laughs> For those that have just joined, there's a task on the screen. If you could just complete that task, we've probably got now about uh, one minute left. Frankie has just left, which I presume is a technical difficulty. So she will be joining uh, back any time now. She did, said that she had some concerns with her, her Microsoft Teams.
Mel, just to, just so I know, I presume that Frankie does have your uh, mobile number. Um, should she, she need to ring it in case she she can't go back on? Yeah, I'll give her a ring now. Okay, thank you. She did. She did just appear and then has gone back off. Mel, has she confirmed what 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 issue she's having? Yeah, um, I'm just on the phone to her now. Um, she didn't realise she's gone off, um, so she's just logging back off and coming back on. Okay, no worries. Yeah, I'm still on the phone. Mm, if you try and. Mel, if you just explain to her, she did pop up and it was just accepting her into the into the group, however, it did go off. There we go. Oh. Welcome back, Frankie. You just you just went backstage for five minutes. So you just want to reach... <laughs> if you just want to reshare your your slide, we were just on the task. Mm. It give it give people extra extra minutes just to complete what was on the screen. <laughs> I need to, have you got my uh, presentation on email? Oh, shares, let's see if we can do it like this.
can you share the presentation from your side? I can't. I don't have it by email. You you shared it last time. Um, so the the toolbar in the in the middle of your screen, the the, the middle it section. Was, it was on the app version, which was fine sharing my screen, and then now it's kicked me out, and I'm on the internet version. It will. Oh, right. okay. If you just yeah. if you if you just want to email me the PowerPoint, I'll share it as soon as possible. So my email is Leon Crosby. Sorry about this, guys. Crosby, yeah. At Blackburn YZ. Blackburn YZ. Yep, dot org. Dot org. Okay. I've fired that over. That is compared to set. Undeliverable. No, 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 no. Is it worth nothing to come through, Frank? If it does come through, is it worth potentially um, you talking about the presentation? Unless you need yeah, some visuals. Yeah, 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 let's go. For it. So, can you guys see me now? We can see you, yeah. Okay, hi. Um, okay, so I'll quit. I'll talk through the presentation. I know you can't see it, but we'll we'll send it over to you, um, and you'll be able to understand the concept of what I'm talking about a little bit more. Okay, so, um, as we, I don't know if you heard this bit, so I'll quickly cover this again. Generations are not defined by birth years, but by significant events at critical cognitive development stages, usually between the ages of 12 and 20, that shape our characteristics, behaviors, communication methods as a generation. Uh, hence, a new generation is born and uh, the media begin to label it. So we're Generation Z, born 1995 to 2010. And there are actually five different generations operating in the workforce at once at the moment. So they are traditionalists. They're born between 1922 and 1945. And they experienced events like the Great Depression, World War II. And this made them very, they were very conditioned within society. This made them very disciplined and hard work into a job. You know, we, we went to a job to get paid. Um, we take that money home to our family and we support our, our family. And then they gave birth to baby boomers, 1946 to 1965. And baby boomers experienced things like uh, the Vietnam War, um, women's rights and civil rights movements, um, and also the moon landing. So things were starting to we realize the world is bigger than ourselves at the moment now and baby boomers became very innovative but they were also very hard working because of their parents who were traditionalists and very loyal to an organization you know they went to work they were given a job they were very grateful for that job and they were often loyal to that organization for their lifetime um an example my mom is a baby boomer and she's been with her organization 44 years and very loyal to the organization and then baby boomers and traditionalists gave birth to Generation X, who were born 1966 to 1979. And things started to change a little bit here because Generation X were the first adopters of tech and the first adopters of the internet. So they started to see that there was more going on in the world than just going to work and being loyal to an organization. And they found the uh, concept and the idea of work-life balance. We, we started to appreciate that we have a life outside of work, but they were also loyal to their organization because of their baby boomer and traditionalist parents. Now, baby boomers and Generation X gave birth to millennials who were born 1980 to 1994. Now, millennials even more so went through the rise of the digital era, era and the rise of the social era. Um, we had Google, we had Facebook, um, we had Instagram. And we started to understand that there, there, again, even more so, there's more to life than just being loyal to an organization. We wanted purpose in our work. We wanted um, more, more about more in our in our job. We had more education. We had many more options. Um, but it was a bit of a lost generation because 
we had little guidance, you know, we're figuring out how, how the world works on our own. And then Generation Z come along after millennials and we actually differ quite a lot from millennials and we'll zoom into them in a minute. Generation Z are shaped by technology um, and social media. We don't actually remember a time before technology and social media was around. So we are the app generation, you know, we're social gamers. We understand there's much more to life and we want that work-life balance. Um, and we we are much more part of our uh, community um, and linking up with people all over the world, crossing bound, borders and boundaries more so than any other generation before us. Um, and this can often give us the impression that we're self-entitled, um, but that's not always the case. We've just been brought up very differently and our mindset is very different to older generations. And we need to work together in the workforce and mentor the strengths from each generation to provide a balance between all our perspectives and all our experiences. So let's zoom into millennials and Generation Z for a second. What okay. Yeah. I can share now. I've got the ne your next slide up. Do you want me to share that? Millennials vs Generation Z? Yep, I'll share Go that. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, are we on? Uh, two, six. There we go. Um, can you see? Just two seconds. How do I get it on? <laughs> uh, slide. Oh, there we go. That, that one? We are millennials, be generation Z. I can't see it. I can't see you. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. go. Okay, so millennials v generation z we're actually quite different millennials had facebook they share their whole life with the world whereas generation z we're actually much more of a private generation we have snapchat um, and youtube you know we actually like to finish a task before we show it to the world we're, we're much more private and um, millennials they operated on an average two screens perhaps um, a laptop and a phone whereas generation z we operate on an average of five screens perhaps um, a laptop, a phone, an iPad, an iWatch, um, and any other device that you might have. I actually remember asking asking a year 11 student once, do you have any experience with technology? She said, no. And I said, what do you mean no? And we listed about seven or eight devices that she uses at home that she didn't understand how these te how the, all this technology growing up had shaped her, that when she goes to the workforce, the leadership might not necessarily have. So being able to multitask across all these screens, all these devices is a massive advantage of ours when we go through to the workforce. I find this one quite funny because millennials, they grew up with Harry Potter and um, the concept that, that, you know, we we work as a team and we'll get the task done. Whereas Generation Z, we grew up with Hunger Games, which is much more fight for your life survival mode. And um, we have to know our strengths. We have to know our weaknesses um, to be able to get through life, get get through that job we want. We know how competitive the world is. Um, you know, back in the day, uh, older generations might have seen a job advert perhaps in the, in the paper, uh, on a bulletin board at the local church. Um, or school and now we can find hundreds of thousands of jobs online and we know there might be 100 200 300 cvs so we need to be we know we're competitive and we need to know what what we are made of for that particular job or role millennials they have an average 16 second attention span and because of social media that is actually half now to generation z who have an average eight second attention span which is crazy um, and you know that makes sense to us because we we go on our phone you might look at instagram for five minutes and then you'll come off it and you'll go on it again and think oh i've just looked at this we have such a short attention span and when this uh, translates to the workforce we need to have short and snappy training we need to we get quite bored easily so our leaders need to engage us quickly because we will just switch off as we as we know Leon, do you want to yeah so we're going to look at the six key events that have shaped generation z characteristics next one 
We've got technological advancement. So Generation Z are the true digital native generation. We are connected constantly, simply and intuitively across borders and boundaries that many other generations wouldn't have been able to communicate across before. We are labeled the digital generation and this describes the blurred line that we experience between the digital and physical world. Um, there's actually a, a really good story about a girl in America called Julia and Julia had an iPad and her favorite game to play on the iPad was Snap. So her mom decided that one day she was going to get the cards out and play Snap with the playing cards. And Julia sat down with the playing cards and she reached out and she touched the card and the card didn't turn over. And she reached out again, she touched the card and the card didn't turn over and she got really frustrated and she threw the cards all over the room. Now, this is because Julia is used to playing Snap on the iPad. It doesn't mean that we are self-entitled with what we have. It just means that we understand how to operate things very differently. We are connected in, in a digital way and in ways that are much more efficient than with previous generations. Next slide. Yeah. This the second key event is how much education accessibility we have. We can literally be whatever we want to be. You know, we've got access to global universities, online courses, short courses, whatever interests us. We can learn our we can learn our career in that we have a very personalized career. Like my job now as a Generation Z specialist and speaker would just not be around um, without the internet. Um, and we've also adopted something called just-in-time learning, which is because there are so many um, changes in the world so rapidly, we need to keep learning and we need to keep doing our online courses, keep educating ourselves, keep updating our education so that we can learn just in time for new technologies to come out in the world. But the... The fact that we have so much access to education, it's heightened our anxieties that we're on the path, right path. You know, are we doing the right thing with our life? Are we are we enjoying it? We have so many options out there, um, but that that's okay. That's okay, and I definitely recommend that you follow something that interests you, that inspires you, um, so that you can always be comfortable that you're doing something that that you enjoy. Next slide. There we go. The third key event is social media. So as we know, social media is a massive, massive influence for Generation Z. It shaped our behaviours, our attitudes, our communication habits, goals, dreams, anxieties, relationships, um, values and beliefs. Um, whereas for older generations, much of what shaped them were, were their parents. And we've got much more external influences, particularly with social media. It's made us much more aware of the options out there. And it's made us aware of global issues, such as on this slide, climate change and plastic oceans. We um, want to help the world and be connected, like I said, be connected to, to a purpose. Um, that's going to help help um, on a bigger on a wider scale. Social media has also made us Generation Z the masters of earning influence. We know how to jump online. We know how to engage our audience online. Um, such as, for example, Greta Thunberg. She has got out there in the world and she has influenced the masses just through using her social media and being inspired and providing a purpose for people that, that they can connect to. The sharing economy, Generation Z are what we call we economists. We believe in sharing assets within communities that pour our money into communities instead of instead of assets um, and we want to experience culture the sharing economy uh, is companies like airbnb uber deliveroo that make the world uh, cheaper quicker um, and also a more personalized way of, of working and this is something that shaped generation z we're we're very we're very resourceful with the sharing economy we will we will um, find the most efficient way to, to do something to get to get places The economic recession is the fifth 
key event that has shaped Generation Z. You know, millennials and Generation Z watched their parents suffer, their baby boomer parents suffer the 2008 banking collapse. They watched parents lose businesses overnight. And this made us very aware um, how important pay and salary is. Um, we ha are seeing millennials in in a lot of debt and you know we've got easy access to to finance and credit cards and we've got all our, our university debt so we're actually known as the debt generation um, because we are very aware of how we are very realistic about finances in the world and we understand how important income and stability is And the final key event that shaped Generation Z is the rise of terrorism. Um, so we get a bit of controversy about this one, but actually we understand that the world is very uncertain. Nothing is guaranteed. We could go absolutely anywhere and something could happen. And very unfortunately, we experienced this um, in our own country with the Manchester attacks um, a few years back. But what we what we do as a generation is we don't let that stop us from experiencing and experiencing life. And we saw that one year later, as you know, Ariana Grande held the One Love concert and we saw the power of community and solidarity. I know my parents were um, very cautious about me going away on holiday um, because of all the, ri the rise of terrorism. And I understand that that's very real that's realistic and i'm very aware of how drastically things can shift and things can change now um and it doesn't stop us from going out there and experiencing life so they're the six key events that have shaped generation z so how have these yeah how have these events shaped our expectations of the workforce next slide we'll go through them one by one so pay and salary is actually the number one most important job uh, aspect to Generation Z. And this is probably because of the economic recession that, that we experience. Um, so, it, you know, if that is an important aspect of a job to you, how do you increase your value, understand your skills and understand how to negotiate and what, what salary you're looking for, what kind of life you want? Um, Paying salary is the, the number one most important aspect of a job. Career, that's fine. Yep. Career and personal growth. Um, we want to generally start from the bottom and work our way up. So actually 76% of Generation Z are willing to start at the bottom and work their way up. However, we want to create our own career ladder and we're very eager um, for that career progression. And when you go into a workforce, your leader is not always going to know what you're made of. So you need to be able to identify the opportunities for, for your own growth and say, you know, where do you want to be in five years and help you with, between you and your leader help create that career and personal growth ladder for yourself. We expect work-life balance because we understand through social media that there is more to life than just a job. And actually 44% of generations then value a flexible work-life schedule and work-life expectancy is increasing, but within many industries, work-life um, balance is, is a challenge. But what can we do to, to combat that? We can help create a life at work. We can actually create um, a space where we, we enjoy going and create a work culture where we're not missing out on what is on social media or what we think we're missing out of because we actually enjoy our job. So when you go into the workplace, if work-life balance is important to you, you can help create life at work and it's what organisations should be looking into doing now. Brand experience, Generation Z have been engaged in brands their whole lives. Social media and marketing has... Um, dramatically increase the brand engagement and this has made us as employees want to be part of a brand culture and vision that purpose i was talking talking about connected to a purpose a vision a mission um i specialize in the service industry so there's lots of uh, growth and adoption for this in the service industry but when you go through to a job how can you help create that brand experience? How can you help be connected to that culture, that mission, that vision within that brand experience? 
We appreciate a family culture. We want to become um, part of a community in which we belong. And we have experienced this through social media and reality TV, for example, programs like the Kardashians, like Geordie Shaw. We understand that we might not always get on, but we are a family unit. And it's taught us that a family culture within an organization helps us um, get through problems you know when the storm comes we pull together because we're a family and we appreciate that um, and I found in many organizations that don't have a family culture we we experience employees leaving because they don't feel connected to, to the culture of the organization we expect instant reward and recognition there is um, a really interesting finding when I was doing my research. I asked a girl how often she refreshes her social media page and she said around every 15 seconds. And then I asked her how often she receives feedback in the workforce and she said maybe once a year. Now, I'm not saying, you know, that's the reason why she wasn't engaged in her job because she wasn't engaged in her job, but it certainly is the start of how we align generational characteristics with workplace expectation. Social media and technology is very fast moving and therefore we expect that instant reward and recognition that we are used to from social media um, and technology. We expect privacy to work. This goes back to millennials on Facebook and us on Snapchat, YouTube, Instagram. We understand there's increased competition out there in the world and we want to be able to get on with our work. We don't want our boss hanging over our shoulder. You know, micromanagement is absolutely dead. We want to be able to perfect our work before, before we show that. And that's quite different to other generations. They often work together in teams. And it's not that we can't work together as a team, but we like to work privately as a team as well. We like that privacy to get on with our work and um, present, present our work when it's finished. Fast technology and equipment, we expect our technology to be fast because that's how we've been conditioned. We have such fast working technology. 91% of Generation Z say how sophisticated a company is with technology will influence their decision to work there. Going back to that eight second attention span, when we wait for an internet page to load, if it's taken longer than eight seconds, we are starting to get demotivated and distracted by something else. So when we go into the workforce, our leaders need to understand that we have those short attention spans and we need to have fast technology and equipment, up-to-date equipment that we can use to be able to perform our job roles to maximum efficiency. Personalized engagement, social media, technology, again, has taught us everything is personalized in this world. You can personalize um, your trainers, your social media feeds, um, and in fact, 50% of Generation Z would actually rather write their own job description than be given one. We don't want to fit into a generic society. We want personalized careers and personalized engagement. We are a hyper custom generation. Um, and in the workforce, this needs to be personalized training, personalized support, personalized communication methods. This might be um, an older generation might actually prefer to talk. Just go back one. Sorry. That one. The older generations might prefer to talk face to face, whereas we prefer to use like we're doing now Teams or Zoom or some sort of online interaction. So we need to be personalizing um, our communication methods to who we're talking to in the workforce. We expect supportive management. We all know that the world we live in now, we have much more heightened levels of anxiety and mental health being reported. And this demands uh, higher levels of emotional intelligence from leaders. And we expect our leaders to be supportive because what happens if they're not, we're going to leave. We understand that there are many more options out there in the world. We're going to jump on the internet. We're going to look for another job. And our leaders need to be supportive of, of our lives. They need to understand that, you know, we're, we're not robots. We have uh, emotions and we need to build trust and relationships and loyalty to be able to keep us in that, in that job, in that unit. Okay, 
So we've gone through the six key events that have shaped Generation Z and how these events have shaped our expectations of the workforce. I'm just wondering if anybody has any questions about any generations. I don't know if you can type, can you, to your teachers? Uh, the, the chat function is taken off, but they can ask over audio. Yeah, if you want to ask any questions over audio. <laughs> Come on, millennials. Gen Z. Gen Z, sorry, apologies. I, Frankie, from, from listening to that, I was, I'm excited to see young people go into the workplace because I think the world will be better. Uh, and I think that should tell the old, teach the older generations some new tricks. As young people are, are going into college and further education, what advice would you give to those? I would advise them to look at those first few slides we looked at. And we know the amount of, uh, competition that's out there at the moment and we really need to understand what we're made of and what we have to offer to a job role so we need to be identifying what aspect of a job is the most important to us is it paying salary is it purpose is it that family culture is it career and personal growth and understanding our strengths as we take them into the workforce you know we need to take some accountability for ourselves and be a bit more assertive um, where we want to be where do you want to be in five years and how are you going to help yourself get there um, because we know the amount of competition that's out there uh, and we need to stand out from the crowd so really be identifying your strengths at an early age and know what you can take to a workforce Brilliant. Um, has anyone else got any questions for open the floor to Chloe Frank I, I, I love that it was it, it kind of woke me up um, we kind of knew things are going on, but actually that was really informative. Um, and I know for me, for managing people, I'm going to take some of that learning and try and be a better manager, but also understand myself. So thank you for that. Perfect. Yeah, no problem. Um, Chloe, no problem. do you want thank to... You so much. Oh, it's fine. Chloe, do you want to um, take the floor? Yeah, we will do. Hello, so can everyone see me now? Um, so I'm uh, Chloe from Blackburn College, um, so I'm just here to provide an update really on everything that's going on at the college um, and if any of you've got any questions, any teachers or pupils that do have any questions then um, you can ask me. Um, so we are currently in the process for our year 11 pupils planning um those are in year 11 and going to go on to into college we are planning our enrollment process at the minute and a lot of that this time is going to be done online because of um obviously social distancing um we can't have a lot of people in the hall and stuff uh, so just be aware that you're going to be getting some information about that uh, through the post soon if you're an applicant uh, and that information will be getting sent out to schools as well about um, online enrollment. Uh, we have the Ready, Steady, Go programme as your transition piece of work for any um, Year 11 pupils that aren't at school at the minute. They can go online and do the Ready, Steady, Go programme um, on there. You can still apply for courses and um, you can still apply for friendships as well. Um, apprenticeships, I believe, are doing a few telephone interviews now. Um, with employers and stuff so you could look at that option and um, for our full-time courses and A-levels uh, we're just offering course places based on uh, provisional grades and uh, the grades that you've been predicted um, so yeah so you'll get all the update next about um, online and uh, through the post in the next few weeks and um, just wondering has anyone got, anyone got any questions Silent crowd. <laughs> Thank you, Chloe. Um, appreciate that. And Chloe, that, that will be briefed in the sorry, two seconds. Just mute. Um, that will be briefed in the overview sent out to to schools to conclude today's learning and then just some updates on your behalf. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I'll email it to Mel. Brilliant. Okay, everyone. So uh, following this, uh, it'll be sent out sooner 
Um, so unfortunately, Ryan's audio from the video from last week's masterclass uh, from the recording didn't work. So we're just asking him to do a new one. We can send Frank his video should the audio work. I'm pretty sure it will do um, today. And you'll receive a one page. This is what you learn uh, from today. Next week it is Forbes. So that is uh, law and soliciting. So you can understand exactly how to get into the workplace or to that industry. And you can ask, obviously, those that know uh, any questions. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Frankie. Frankie, Chloe. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Bye. See you soon. Bye, everyone. See you later, Leon. See you later, Ben. Yeah, I know, yeah. I don't, I don't want to be known in there, but I'm not me. But...